Hello and a very warm welcome to Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program with me, Kelly Youngden. Our top stories this week. His Majesty the King granted audience to their Royal Highnesses, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, on Thursday. And lottery business resumes in the country after it was banned in 2011. His Majesty the King granted an audience to their Royal Highnesses, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, on Friday the 14th of this month. The Royal Couple of England was on two days visit to Bhutan. Their Royal Highnesses was received by Her Royal Highness Princess Chimi Yangzum Wongchuk at the Poro International Airport. Prince William and Her Highness Kate Middleton were assured to Tashi Chizong in a traditional Chibril procession. On arrival at the main entrance of the Zong, the Britain's royal couple was received by ADC to His Majesty the King and the Chief of Protocol. After that, their royal highnesses were ushered to the throne room. His Majesty the King then granted an audience to the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Her Majesty the Gelson was also present during the audience. After the audience, their Majesties and their Royal Highnesses granted photo opportunity to both local and international media at the courtyard of the Zong. Their Majesties and their Royal Highnesses then proceeded to Grand Kunri Hall and lighted butter lamps. After the butter lamp ceremony, their Majesties and the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge proceeded to Lincoln Palace. Later in the evening, His Majesty the King and Her Majesty the Gelsin hosted a private dinner in honor of the royal couple at Lincoln Palace. Prince William's father, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales, visited Bhutan in 1998. Following his footstep was His Royal Highness the Duke of York, who visited the country in 2010. With cameraman Puktashi Pemalhadin reporting for BBS News. His Majesty the King offered six sandalwood boxes at Cherry Monastery in Thimpu last Sunday on the 10th of this month. The boxes will be used to store precious relics in the monastery, including the treasures of Shabdung Aung Namgyal. His Majesty personally carried one of the 55 kg boxes up to the monastery, which is located on a hill in Todena, about an hour's walk from the road. The Tsula Lebe of the central monastic body said the act of a king himself carrying an object which would be used for such a holy purpose was in itself most sacred and an extraordinary event. <laughs> The relics are sacred and we have to take care of it because it cannot be found elsewhere in the world. If we lose the relics to time, then it will have adverse effects to the country's present and future. So through such an act of His Majesty, we understand the importance His Majesty accords to the relics. It will accumulate great merit and bring immense benefit to the people and country. Cheri Monastery is among the first monasteries built in Bhutan by Jabdungaung Namgil in the 17th century and it was from here that he established the Drukpa Monastic Order in Bhutan. Jabdung spent several years in retreat at the monastery during his lifetime. Sonomongdi for BBS News. Despite significant increase in the number of private vehicles, the economy's total fuel imports decreased by about 1 billion neutrum last year. The economy imported 7.3 billion neutrum worth of fossil fuel. In 2014, total imports stood at 8 billion neutrum. Local economists said the decrease in the value of fuel imports was mainly due to sharp decrease in global fuel prices. Global fuel prices decreased from 140 US dollars a barrel to less than 40 US dollars a barrel between 2014 and 2015. Economists believe the hydropower sector consumes more fuel than private vehicles, where huge trucks and machinery works round the clock. Works to restore Drugelzong in Paro has started. 
The Zong, constructed in the 17th century by Shabdung Ngaung Namgyal, is currently in ruins. Upon the command of His Majesty the King, restoration works began this year. Preliminary works are underway to restore Drugel Zong. The Department of Culture under the Home Ministry is currently carrying out archaeological surveys and research on the Zong. Detailed information of the structure and its surroundings from the time it was built till now are being studied. <laughs> Our main target is to research the layout of the Zong, to find out how it was in the beginning and then what kind of changes were made. The archaeological survey which started in February is expected to be completed by this month. Following this, the actual planning and designing works will be carried out. On another section of the Zong, a team from the Department of Geology and Mines are carrying out the ground stability test. Around 30 meters of hole are being drilled into the foundation of the ruined Zong. The team has drilled one hole so far and found signs of strong base in one of the locations. They will drill four more holes around the Zong. A team from the National Land Commission is also surveying the Zong area. The actual restoration works, according to the project manager, is expected to begin from July this year. Meanwhile, construction of labor camps is nearing completion. Once complete, workers will be mobilized to start the work. Project officials said a replica of the restored Zong will be displayed at the Royal Flower Exhibition for the public to get a glimpse of the restored Zong. For Yushi Gelson in Paro, Kiliangdan, BBS News. Getting around and doing things are the rights that we take for granted. But for wheelchair users, the barriers are all too evident. And it is the infrastructure in the country that is far from being friendly to the wheelchair users. 51-year-old Pemo Doji from Tsirong injured his back in a mishap in 2004, and since then he was not able to walk. But the accident did not diminish his spirit. He lives alone and runs a tailoring shop. He fixes electronic appliances and also provides tailoring classes. <laughs> There is no place in Bhutan for wheelchair users except the hospital. Forget about going upstairs. We can't even move freely on the ground. Sometimes I run out of needles, threads or cloth pieces and I have to go to the town. I need assistance to get out of the house and then into the taxi. When I reach the town, I cannot enter the shops. If there were ramp systems, it would be very comfortable. Dr. Sangha Daji is a physiotherapist with the National Referral Hospital. He is also the chairperson of the Disabled Persons Association of Bhutan. Dr. Sangha said there are no ramps in the country making it difficult for wheelchair users to be independent, and there is no concrete policy that safeguards the rights of people with special needs. I personally think that it may, because the ramps are not there, because People think that there are no wheelchair users because you don't see them. When you don't see, you don't think about it. So therefore, uh, ramps are not installed. Wheelchair users are not able to come because it's not accessible. It's not accessible because the planners, implementers and policy makers never think that there are people who use wheelchairs to go about. The National Referral Hospital issued 112 wheelchairs to adults in Thimpu alone in the last three years. There are many wheelchair users who wish to work and be independent, but the infrastructure makes them helpless. Family members will take care of them for some time, but for how long can they do that? Be it town, villages or market or bank, if these places install ramps for wheelchair users, it will help us become independent. Then we can do the work ourselves. 
The Gross National Happiness Commission will come up with the National Disability Policy in the next one year, which will help the country address the issue at a larger scale. Pema Doji only wishes for a place for people with special needs to be independent and to earn a living. Kiliangdan for BBS News. By next year, automobile workshops and auto spas in Thimpu will require individual wastewater treatment plants. Currently, there is only one common wastewater treatment plant for the entire workshop area in Oloka. The lone wastewater treatment plant for the workshop area was constructed some six years ago. And today, with increasing users, the plant is filled beyond its filtering capacity and breaks down frequently. As a result, affluents from the area for most times are directly discharged into Wanchu. Similarly, there are many car wash along the Olaka Babisa Expressway from where wastewater flows to Wanchu untreated. However, there are some with such plants installed while a few are planning to do so. Timpu Tomde's chief environment officer, Tring Peljur, said, discharge of untreated water adversely affects aquatic lives, and with increasing number of vehicles in the town, it has become necessary to monitor its associated impacts more strictly. We will be issuing a notification saying that from next year, all the workshop, uh, auto workshop and the car wash facilities should have the treatment plant inbuilt within their uh, was say, <coughs> uh, repair or wa uh, washing facilities. So from next year, in case if they don't have this uh, treatment uh, facilities, water treatment facilities, wastewater treatment facilities, we will not issue their or renew their environment clearances. According to a report by the Asian Development Bank in 2010, approximately 6.5 million litres of car wash wastewater is generated every year. It is the largest volume of waste generated by the automobile workshops in the country. Poop game for BVS News. Lottery business will once again resume in the country after it was banned in 2011. The finance minister launched the office of Royal Bhutan Lottery Limited in Funseling on 8th of this month. It is the new state-owned enterprise to generate income for the country. Finance Minister Namge Doji said it is to meet the trade deficit with India. <laughs> Bhutan is too much dependent on imports. We import more and export very less. Then we are facing trade deficit. For example, the majority of our imports are from our neighbor, India. We all know about the rupee crisis. At the moment, we would start within the country and later we might open outside. When we start lottery outside, we would expect income generations. Paper lotteries will hit the market soon in Bhutan after the staff are recruited. The office will also explore possibility of introducing semi-online lotteries. Present government, in keeping with the election pledge, has decided to set up a uh, separate state-owned enterprise. Unlike in the past where it used to be a department under the Ministry of Finance, now the uh, government's uh, decision is, is to set up an uh, independent state-owned enterprise under the Ministry of Finance, under the ownership of the Ministry of Finance, with a separate board and a, and a separate uh, CEO. So today's occasion is to launch this uh, company. Now the board and the CEO has to meet to now to formulate the, the various uh, activities for the lottery, uh, what sort of lottery uh, schemes we should have within Bhutan, and if you have to go beyond the, uh, the, the country's borders, how do we uh, formulate uh, such uh, programs? The lottery business outside the country will be directly through states and not with the lottery agents like in the past. Bhutan lottery business was closed in 2011 following some legal issues while trading the lottery. Prior to its closure, Bhutan Lottery generated 220 million rupees annually. For Kinga Tashi, Sunampem, BBS News.
A policeman posted as security at the Toshi Chazong in Thimpu saved a 15-year-old boy from drowning on Saturday last week. Sources say the boy had tried to die by suicide. The policeman had jumped into Wangchi River and fished the boy out. The police, upon completing the necessary formalities, have handed over the boy to the brother. Some children, as young as 12 years old, are compelled to do hard labor, not just to earn a living for them, but also to support their families. A labor force survey in 2011 found 4,400 Bhutanese children aged 13 to 17 years working outside their homes. Purna Badu Tama left his home to fend for his mother and four siblings when he was a mere 12 year old child. He began working as a waiter in a hotel. Now, at 17, he works as a mechanic at one of the workshops in Thimpu. I have to work to pay the expenses of my siblings. When I grow up, I want my mother to quit her job in the national workforce. If I can, I want to become an entrepreneur and open my own workshop. He said his father died when he was young and that he will do whatever he can to help his family. He earns a meager salary of 5,000 yutam a month. Like Purna, there are about 8 below the age of 18 working in various workshops in Thimpur. The Labour and Employment Act of Bhutan 2007 do not specifically categorize children working in workshops as child labour. However, officials at the Labour Ministry said under age children working as mechanics in workshops fall under child labour. If found flouting the rule, an employer will be fined a minimum of 11,250 newtons, states regulation on acceptable forms of child labour. Compiled for Sunam Churin, Sangi Chizum for BBS News. After almost two decades since its black topping, Kurutang Town's road will finally be resurfaced. Lack of maintenance has left the road in a bad condition and residents complaining. Their town's road riddled with potholes is not something residents of Kurutang Town in Punaka are not familiar with. Motorists say the issue has been put forth to their municipal office several times, but to no avail. The condition of the road is bad. With potholes, it is inconvenient to drive around. There are chances of our cars getting damaged. Sometimes our cars are damaged due to the potholes, and repairing it is an expensive affair. It would be convenient for both drivers and pedestrians if the road is maintained soon. At times we have passengers who are sick. So when we drive on the road, which is full of potholes, it's difficult for them. Also, there are chances of accidents as we try to avoid potholes. The Kurutang municipal engineer Ayman Limbu said, earlier, due to limited budget, resurfacing works could not be executed. Later, when the budget was approved, works had to be shelved as construction of sewer network was underway. About 16 million neutrum has been approved for resurfacing of the road. He said the contract will be tendered out after Shabdun Kuche. Kurutang Town's road network was constructed in between 1997 and 1998. Compiled for Chunidema, Demo, Kiliangdin, PBS News. Sarpong Dzongkuk achieved almost fourfolds more than its target set for cardamom production for this financial year. At the beginning of the current five-year plan, the Dzongkuk planned to produce 23 metric tons every year. For the fiscal year 2015 to 2016, Sarbong Zongkok produced 81 metric tons of cardamom. Officials see, as the value of cardamom increased over the years, many people who once stopped growing this spice got back to business. Of the 12 gyoks in Sarbong, Chuzum gyok has the highest number of cardamom growers. During the recent midterm review of the Zongkok, Impressed with the achievement, Prime Minister Singh Topke assured government's full support in marketing the produce. 
Government should support in terms of timely distributions of siblings and seeds. The government will provide fencing and irrigation facilities whenever needed. Today, most of the cardamom produced in the Zongkak is marketed across the border at the Indian town of Dadgari. Last year, they generated an income of 111 million newtum through its seal. For Karmawandi in Gelefu, Bemanamge, BBS News. Bhutan Biogas Project is targeting to construct over 3,600 biogas plants by the end of this year. The plants are expected to reduce the use of fuel load drastically in the country. Bhutan consumes more than 1 million tons of fuel load every year. On an average, a single Bhutanese household consumes over 1,000 kilograms of fuel load annually, which is the highest in the world. In Bhutan, fuel wood consists of firewood, liquefied petroleum gas, kerosene and electricity. Around 70% of fuel woods are used for cooking and heating. This figure, however, is expected to change once 3,600 biogas plants are constructed by the end of this year. The biogas plants, after replacing the fuel woods, are expected to save over 92 million newton annually. Energy is Right now, we are not making much use of energies like wind, sunlight and biogas. So when it comes to biogas, many advantages are associated with it. Firstly, our people in the rural areas mostly depend on firewood for cooking and for other means. So it helps to reduce the use of firewood drastically. The biogas plants are constructed under the Bhutan Biogas Project. It was initiated in 2011. So far, over 2,700 biogas plants have been installed in the country. The biogas plants constructed over the past years have already started benefiting the people. <laughs> We need not have to work under smokes and worry about the firewood. With it, we are able to cook food easily. Especially villagers who raise cattle are benefited much, which is why we are very happy about the new facilities being provided in the rural areas. It benefits a lot to citizens who earn less income. Firstly, it is environment friendly. Secondly, we need not have to depend on imported gas cylinders. If we are to exchange gas cylinder, it costs us more than 800, inclusive of taxi charges, which is very expensive. Apart from saving expenses on cooking gas, biogas is also environment friendly and sustainable. A single biogas plant will function for over 25 years if constructed properly, according to biogas experts. Today, the Bhutan Biogas Project is implemented in 16 Zongkaks. Pasang BBS News. That is all we have for you this week. Thank you for joining us. This is Kilian saying goodbye.